Okay, the first one is Amazon EC2 high memory instances are now available in US East, South America, the Asia Pacific regions. So these are EC2 yeah. instances with 12 terabytes of memory. This is pretty incredible. <laughs> uh, this is insane. 12 TB of RAM to go with these instances. Um, can we bring up, uh, by the way, I think the announcement's kind of gone off page or it's not come oh, up on page. Here we, oh, yeah, there we go. See, we're both, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so these are some super large instances, 12. 6 TB, 3 TB, 6 TB, 12 TB of RAM, depending on what size you pick, 56 or 112. Um, but yeah, um, these SAP HANA use cases, which are what I've always driven, right from the time that the um, X1 32XL came out, and this is maybe seven, eight years ago, um, Ever since those have come, they've always been driven by SAP HANA. That seems to be the only use case. But when you really think about it, I wonder why these very large instances are not being used for databases in general, given that the more you can load up into memory, the faster those databases should really be. And... So yeah, these are not right? general purpose. These are these are just for SAP HANA. Is that right? Because they said I mean, these are available as general purpose instances, and you can run SAP HANA workloads on it. the The problem is that it's not available with RDS. Like these instances are actually not available with RDS. So that just seems tricky. In fact, um, my struggle with that is. RDS still hasn't, you know, for the likes of Aurora, they still haven't launched the 24XL Graviton instances. Like the Graviton instances are still running, um, I think the 12XL, if I'm not mistaken, or 16XL. So they're not yet at um, 24XL. And I, I, I would love to understand the constraints of launching all of these. Because at some level, a certain CPU can only talk to a certain amount of memory, but we don't know what that constraint is for the Graviton 3, do we? Of how large of an instance or how much memory uh, a Graviton 3 can, can address. Correct. But even the Graviton 2s are not available with the 24XL. And I would assume that given that it's a 64-bit chip, it should be able to address a 24 Excel. I mean, the Intel ones do. So from in terms of addressable memory, I don't think that would be the constraint, but it'd be interesting to understand what they've tuned those instances to. Yeah, so it's not an architecture issue. It is a it's implementation a sure. bundling um, for whatever reason, or maybe it's just a demand. They haven't gotten the demand for it. Yeah. By the way, just as a side note, uh, there's an interesting conversation going on in the community about uh, today's earlier announcement about uh, the UAE region being opened up or being made available. And the conversation is that it's probably most services are actually not showing up over there or not yet available in the UAE region. So it feels like a very incomplete deployment of an AWS region. Um, grab, there's no Graviton. There are half the, you know, uh, CPU types, processor types are not yet available. Um, you don't have um, a version two of the API gateway. There's so many other services that are missing that it feels like a very incomplete deployment. So I think it'd be good to figure out from AWS what their strategy to load, load sorry, to rolling out a new data center looks like. Like, how do they prioritize what to put in or not to put in? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I wonder if it's a based on what hardware is available at the time. And we all know that there's global supply chain issues. So is it this is what they can get? Or is it a, is it this is a strategic order? Or is it demand based? Or are there certain hardware that can serve multiple different configurations? And this is the, 
However, the, the Nitro configuration that they chose to go with to allow these particular instances to be served, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's an open question that we, we hope someday we can get some experts from AWS to come in on the show and answer for us. But it baffles me that they've only got such a half-baked um, AZ going. Um, I also wonder whether they actually did this for very specific customers who are local and local only uh, to get them on board. Um, having lived in Dubai for 12 plus years and having worked very closely with the UAE AWS team, um, I know for a fact that they've always wanted to have the big telcos and the government institutions get onto AWS. And that was a big demand from them to you know, set up this region. I wonder if initially they built it just for those use cases and you know, will slowly over a period of time bring in those other general purpose use cases and work, you know, and customer loads in there. Yeah. Okay. So that, that brings a bit, a bigger question of, like you said, we would like to speak to someone from AWS about what's the strategy of what order do things get rolled out to a region and how is it a general strategy or is it driven by local demand or even demands of a particular customer or you know, in this case, the government, the UAE yep. government within that region? Yep. Um, now, go ahead. No, just coming back to this announcement. Um, yeah, this is exciting. I just, I don't know if, you know, in a lot of these regions, there's that kind of demand for these instances. I think you and I were looking at some of this data earlier, and it looks like each one of these instances, what, a million bucks? Well, let's go through the calculation. So on the pricing page, the 12TB.112X large, and that's 109.20 an hour. So and this is 448 cores, correct? Yes, 448 cores for 12 terabytes of RAM, EBS only. So yeah, one, 109.20 is your on-demand pricing. So just if you were to do yep. this in the least efficient way possible and get on-demand for a year, it would be almost a million dollars. Correct. And then thinking about reserve instances, typically about half. So it's still half a million, half a million a year. Yeah, that's a pretty pricey machine to keep running all the time. <laughs> I was trying to think about, you know, when you go to a restaurant and then the the saying is that you 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 buy a, a glass of wine at what the restaurant paid for the bottle. That's typically restaurant pricing. I would love to know what Amazon's pricing is for this is what we paid for yeah. the server, and this is how much we we rented out in terms of ratios. Uh, I was trying, so I bought my first large workstation from these guys, ThinkMate, a long time ago, and I was trying to configure the most RAM that I could, and I got to. Did you hit 12, 12 TB? Like I, no, I, I don't know what architecture supposed twelve TB. I have sure. to look through the options more. I got it to six TB with uh, forty eight <laughs> DIMMs each 128 gigabytes. And so far we're at $126,000. So you can get, <laughs> you can get two of the, you get three of these. Um, but then again, you're not just paying for the hardware, you're paying for the entire experience, right. the entire managed, all the AWS system, yeah. the power, yeah. the reliability, the network. All that stuff. Even yeah, I mean, I would imagine that these machines burn an insane amount of power. So this one says 1425.6 watts estimated. That that's and again, that that's, that's wait, how many cores does this have? This one is not as many. This is well 4x28 core Xeon. Yeah, there's 28 cores. Just I mean, you're gonna have 448 cores in that instance. So multiply this by twenty, and that's your power consumption. But are these actual? Are those actual cores you'd see in? Uh, these are VCPUs, so half of them. Yeah, yeah, these are half of them. So, so if you did graviton ones, are not available. Yeah, these are just Intel. So, um, these are Intel architecture, right? Just yeah. go up. 
Yeah, these are the Xeon, um, what do you call it? The Xeon High Large Memory. Yeah. So you're still looking at 224 cores. Just, I'd say still multiply by 10. That's a power consumption. Well, so in terms of this article, in terms of this announcement, um, what do we think in terms of, well, obviously, if you have a need for this, then this is a, uh, this will simplify your life <laughs> greatly. I mean, what, we, what were the customers who needed this before and didn't have access to it? They were either Correct. using it in a different data center or using on-prem hardware. So in this case, this massively adds simplification. Yep. I, I would love to, if anyone out there has a real world need for these kind of instances, please reach out to us. We would love to have you on the show. We'd love for you to tell us what the experience of these instances is. And uh, yeah, we'd love to hear your story. I am actually dying to try an experiment to see if these instances are available as spot instances. And I wonder if AWS is going to give me a call if I decide to launch a hundred of these. Well, you do that on your account. <laughs> <laughs> that, that How much is it going to cost for an hour if I ran a hundred of these machines, 10 a, bucks a machine? That's a $900 experiment. It's actually just a thousand bucks, isn't it? No, no, no. A thousand would be 10. So... No, but it's one-tenth the price. Spot instances are at one tenth the price. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. No. You can use it for the full hour. Yeah, and if I use it, if I used these instances, so it's a, it's ten bucks an hour. No, this is the, okay. No, the twelve TV is one hundred nine twenty per hour. Correct, but if I did spot instances, oh, I, oh okay, I got it. Okay, sorry. This yeah. is on demand pricing, right? But yeah, if I did spot instances, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm with you. I pay about ten bucks, so let's eleven bucks, and then I run a hundred of them. That's eleven hundred bucks. That's not too shabby for an experiment. The issue would be how in the world are you going to get that much data in there that quickly? Who cares about the data? Run <laughs> these machines and see what they can do. Multiply some big <laughs> matrices together, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Invert a giant matrix. I mean, you have at this point with 100 machines, what? Oh, 100 uh, 12 TB, right? right? So 1,200 terabytes of RAM. That's that's 1.2 petabytes or roughly one petabyte of RAM. What can you do with one petabyte of RAM? <laughs> you, can, you could load the, I don't know, you could load the top thousand movies of Netflix or no, no, you could probably load a big chunk of Netflix all at once. I don't know what you do oh. with it. <laughs> Interesting exercise. Anyway, oh. We'll see if we can figure out if we can run these spot instances and have some fun with them. Oh. I doubt if they'll be available as spot, but. We'll no, I, I would think that given the, the size of this, it would be very rare to see one pop up as spot. <laughs> True. All right. Well, in terms of the article quality itself, it seems very clear. It would be interesting if there was a non SAP HANA example. I think these, these live, everything from the X1 onwards, when, as soon as you had one TB or more of RAM, those are all designed for HANA and HANA alone. Yeah. I, I, I don't know of any other use case that has come up that says, I need a terabyte of RAM. It just those I haven't come across. So what do we rate this in terms of clouds? Are we saying, let's say. Four clouds. Four. All right. Yeah. I think we're good with four. And we see we've got our new that are visible. We the orange, orange borders. <laughs> All right. Well, let's close out this segment and go on to the next one, which is SageMaker 